People give gifts for weddings for different reasons. Usually, people want to help the bride and groom. Many countries have their own customs. In the United States, both families give gifts to the couple. In other places, the customs are very different. In India, the groom's family asks for a large payment from the bride's family. The payment is called a dowry. Sometimes the payment is a special gift with a brand name. For example, some families ask for a Singer sewing machine or a Sony television set. Sometimes the payment is money. The money may be equal to the family's salary for two or three years. Both families agree about the money. They agree on how much money the bride's family can afford to pay. Some Indian families do not like to have many daughters. It is too expensive. Today in India, a woman with a large salary is the same as a woman with a large dowry. In the Middle East, the bride's family asks for a large amount of money from the groom. The gift is called a mar. The mar is money and sometimes land or a home. In Saudi Arabia, the groom gives a lot of money. He buys clothes for the bride for one year and buys furniture for their new home. Rich couples get expensive gifts from both parents. The parents often give nice furniture or a new car. At one time in Saudi Arabia, the mar for a bride was very, very high. Men could not afford to marry Saudi Arabian women. They married women from Lebanon and Egypt. This was bad for Saudi women. Soon, many Saudi women did not have husbands. The government made new rules. They made it hard to marry a foreigner. Another Middle Eastern country, Oman, had problems too. Soldiers in the army could not afford to get married. The Sultan of Oman made a law against large mar payments. This helped couples in Oman to get married. A wedding is a very special and important time. People give gifts for different reasons, but one thing is the same. Everybody wants to help the bride and groom start a happy life together. Canada's favorite sport is ice hockey. All over Canada today, men, women, boys and girls play hockey. Hockey began in Canada, but we do not know exactly how it began. At first, hockey did not have rules. Then, in 1880, Canadian students at McGill University in Montreal made the first rules for ice hockey. These rules changed in 1911 and 1912. The new rules had lines on the ice to make special areas. There were also six players on a team. This is similar to hockey today. Ice hockey is the world's fastest game. Players often skate 30 miles an hour. They get tired quickly. Often, hockey players leave a game and other players come in. In hockey, players use a stick to hit a puck. A puck is like a ball, but it is flat. It slides on the ice. It is better to use a cold puck because it slides faster. Players put the puck in the freezer before a game. In some games, players use more than 30 pucks. Hockey looks easy to play, but it isn't easy. 
players try to hit the puck into the other team's goal. The puck goes faster than the players. Pucks go about 100 miles an hour. Hockey is a dangerous game. Many players get hurt. Today, players wear special clothes to protect their bodies. The player near the goal wears a mask to protect his face. A player with no mask can break his nose or teeth. In the past, there were many players with no front teeth. Professional hockey teams in Canada and the United States play in the NHL. This means the National Hockey League. The NHL started in 1917. Today, the NHL has 30 teams in North America. 24 of the teams are in the United States, but most of the players are Canadian. In the spring, millions of people watch the final hockey game of the year on television. The winner gets the Stanley Cup. The Stanley Cup is the prize for the best hockey team. People around the world play hockey now. It is popular in the Olympics. But hockey will always be Canada's special game. Over 2,000 years ago, there were many rich people in Rome. The Roman government controlled a lot of land. They controlled most of Europe. The Romans forced everyone to use Roman customs. Everyone paid Roman taxes and obeyed Roman laws. The government workers had to speak Latin. Latin was the language of Rome. Rich Romans had two houses. They had one house in the country and one house in the city. The houses had many rooms. There was a garden in the middle. The floors and walls had beautiful tiles. Artists painted pictures on the tiles. The houses had water, a kitchen, and heating. Most people at that time didn't have these things. Many rich Romans had slaves. The slaves cooked and cleaned. Romans took men, women, and children from other countries to work as slaves. The Romans ate three meals a day. They ate the main meal in the afternoon. They ate for several hours. Rich families asked friends to come over for a big meal. They had special foods like mice, oysters, and peacock. They ate with their fingers or a spoon. During meals, Romans didn't sit on chairs. They lay on sofas. Most Romans went to public baths. They relaxed and met friends there. They swam in the pools, read, ate, and got a haircut. There were three kinds of baths, very cold, warm, and hot. Romans cleaned their bodies in another way. They rubbed olive oil on their bodies. Then they took it off with a knife. They believed clean people were very healthy. Rich Romans were always clean. The men shaved their face hair and had short haircuts. Some men dyed their hair black. Women had long hair and wore makeup. They put powder on their faces and put color on their lips. The Romans also wanted to smell clean. They used a lot of perfume. They used different perfumes for different parts of their bodies. They put perfume on their furniture, clothes, and horses, too. The rich Romans had interesting lives. Today we use many things from the Romans, such as perfume, glass windows, and even ketchup. 